Okay, so I'll be speaking on some OPD and inpatients follow up, how to do the telehealth and some amount of manpower management as well. We just heard about the Indian scenario. I'll just give you again an idea that on March 31st, we were 2000 patients and today we are more than 8,500 patients. So the things are fast evolving and we are changing. We don't know where we are gonna go, maybe Italy or Germany or South Korea. So where exactly it's gonna be there, we do not know right now. What we know about virus spread definitely is that it is very easily and sustainably sent and spreads between the people. It spreads more efficiently than influenza virus, but is not as efficient as measles, which is highly contagious. So is it between the flu as well as measles? Most importantly, why we need protocols is because of the statistics 14. The average is around 12 to 14% of all the people are healthcare professionals, be it in Spain, be it in Italy, now in US, and in India also this has been happening. Death in healthcare professionals due to coronavirus is a reality. The person who was a whistleblower, or just now we had heard about the urologist, and in Indore also, where we heard the doctors were also dying. It's mostly because we are exposed to high viral load when we are taking care of the patients. It's the Z0 area or zero zone, you can say, because all the COVID patients have to come sometime or the other to the hospital and the caretakers are us. One more fact which we want to know and which we saw in Abhay's slide also, most of the surgeons, I'm not talking of the medical people, most of the surgeons whom we think we will be getting infected, it's not in the operation theater. It's not a surgery which we are doing, but it's in the wards, in the OPDs, and where we are seeing the patients in a normal way, where we thought that the infection, so it's something different from what the surgeons think about. Infections not happen much in OT because we take good care, but in OPDs and wards are the most of the orthopedic surgeons getting infected. In fact, from a webinar in Spain and in Italy, what we found out was most of them got infected very early because they were not at all knowing how to behave in the wards and in the OPDs. Remember this slide, you have to, don't be a hero. Take care of yourself before you take care of others. Ultimately, what you are gonna get is a garland, either way, if you are alive or if you are dead. So remember this. How do we prevent it is through a written protocol, which has to be unambiguous and has to describe what all we are going to do in which way. We have to implement that. And also we have to monitor whether it is being complied by or not. The lockdown we have implemented, but then the most important thing has been the implementation and monitoring of it and how we have been able to take out those clusters, which is going to help us improve our program of prevention. Most of the things which I've taken is from the CDC guidelines and we can definitely go into that and get an idea of what the Americans or other people are doing for preventing from this virus. Remember, OPDs and IP protocol is required because most of the patients are asymptomatic or rather their symptoms come 2.3 to 2.8 days later than when they have already started infecting people. So even the pre-symptomatic period is a problem and we need to take care of the patients and ourselves while we are dealing with them. Further, there has been a report of false negative also from the tests which we have been doing. So these three form a major part why we do require protections for ourselves as well as for the patients when we are dealing in a I would say in a battlefield, which is the hospitals right now. All the enemies are there inside that hospital. Staging, I've divided into two because many of the people who are in slight district areas will think that we don't have to do anything with this virus. We have only one patient in the entire district, so nothing is gonna happen. So there is always protocols are divided as per these three things. Conventional capacity, when we do not have any changes, Contingency capacity, when we change our daily standard practices slightly, not much, 
and then comes the crisis capacity when we have to drastically change our capacity and crisis management and it may not give us the best of care we try to give the standard of care whatever is possible so at present i will say most of us are in the contingency capacity area but we also need to think and prepare ourselves for the crisis capacity which the italians the spanish and right now the new york hospitals were not able to do and what if we have to go through that we need to have those protocols made right now so that we understand in which capacity and based according to those protocols we work our hospitals to that effect the second way we will look at it is whether we are working in a government hospital whether we are working in a private corporate big hospitals or we are having our own small nursing homes because the things might be different and we can have some things in our nursing homes which might be easier done rather than in a government hospital where we have got thousands and thousands of beds and the patients one more thing which i would like to everyone to understand is this inverse pyramid whenever you take care of a pandemic these are the measures which an administrator is looking at elimination and substituting the hazards they are the most effective measures you kill the bacteria or the virus or substitute it but these are not possible right now because this is the start of the pandemic what we can do is the engineering the administrative and the personal protection things which can help us in controlling this pandemic but remember these the personal protection which we are so particular is the least effective for the society at most and large mostly for us most important are the other measures which we can do as far as for the opd guidelines it is based on <clears throat> the stage of infection that we are dealing with whether you are in a contingency as i said or in crisis mode and based on that you decide first of all you need to ensure that before arrival only you are starting in the opd practices starts it has to be by appointments only even in our hospital we have our online appointment system which needs and has to be now done hyderabad and all andhra telangana that south of india is full of it people we just cannot live without this prop thing that we are do not have online appointments with us with each and every person now having the mobiles in our country we definitely are going to go towards this part the second thing which we need to do is reduce the walk ins so that even if the patient wants to come for an appointment he calls us beforehand so that you can have some pre screening done right there and then based on that only you call him and most important if you are in crisis or let's say like in maharashtra or in arubindo hospital of indor you need to stop the opd straight away those are the crisis stages when you stop opd altogether as we have done from right from 24th of march in my hospital which is a designated covid hospital right now with our trauma center being shift converted into a trauma covid hospital everything you know aims has been stopped in the opd part as such physical opd then some guidelines for the people to think about i am going to give it to you for the both the private persons who are in a nursing home as well as for the people who are working in the opds need to have separate gates for your entry and exit because remember we are not working for the lockdown period what we are working for is what is going to happen after the lockdown period when the patients want to come there is no stopping them and you cannot stop them and you will have to take care of the same patient load which might come to you after the lockdowns and this thing is going to be there for the next 4 to 6 months also remember their people have started using sanitizer tunnels i do not know right now their proven effectivity or not but railways is thinking of doing this at all the railway stations many of the hospitals have started many of the fruit markets and the vegetable marts have started this so it's just to have a basic screening of the people by this remember it's only supplementary measure which cannot bypass the washing of hands social distancing and the masks but something to think about when you have that you do the limited point of entry and exit and have those tunnels for the nursing home people what you can do is you have the source control when the patient comes to you with an appointment 
you need to have the triage been done right outside your hospital if possible with a person in protective equipment who looks at the temperature asks them regarding a screening thing which has already been done gives them a sanitizer give them the hand clean sanitizer or washes their hands off and nowadays provides them with a mask if they are not wearing a mask remember it can be a cloth mask or any other mask but if you are able to control it right at the source in the opds you are going to have much benefit this is what will be required once the lockdown st stops and we are working for the partly lockdown partly working in those situations when the infection can increase the second thing the engineering controls which we can do and which renivas was talking about we might have to install physical barriers at the registration counters like we see in the banks in the railway counters as well as in the us embassy when you go for your visas remember that previously we were trying for as close contact with the people so that there are no barriers but now the thing has turned 180 degrees and we will have to have some physical barriers for the people who are at low level of infection rate or susceptibility like receptionists and other people who we are going to deal with your opd registrations as well so you need to think of these physical barriers as i said only by appointments it should be a well ventilated area preferably open to the outside ventilation with exhaust which is outside no crowding you will have to maintain social distancing in opds make sure that 6 feet distance is maintained easily said than done in a government hospital but especially the private clinics and the people in nursing homes and maybe in corporate hospital can also dis do try to do this think of this we have got some more days of lockdown so how we can make individual protocols for our own hospitals depending upon our own situations whether we are in a contingency mode or in a crisis mode of making a protocol i will show you the photographs you see the things in this the upper top photograph the color is different yellow and gray so you know that persons need to sit on the yellow ones the gray ones are going to be the social distancing thing that's how the airlines is planning to start their aircrafts that there will be one seat which will be empty and then the two things can start maybe that is also a thought which is going on or you have some pointers or posters applied on your chairs which say that you need not sit on this page thing and you have to have sitting which is physically distant from people most of the people need to come through appointments make sure that your appointments are only one or two patients are waiting or if they even there are more patients who have to wait they have to have at least 6 feet to 8 feet distance between them give them proper areas mark them on your floor if you want like in the vegetable marts which has been done or if you have chairs make sure that there is adequate marking on them the other thing which you can do is have visual alerts for health education for the hand hygiene respiratory hygiene and cough etiquette remember the learning points which we know this is the best learning point of having good personal hygiene right now everybody knows wants to know what can save him so teach him through posters in your clinics in your wards everywhere regarding respiratory hygiene cough etiquette and hide hygiene because these are important i am again and again saying for the next 3 to 6 months when we are going to be having covid in our hospitals maybe asymptomatic people but we might think and have our security things lesser down thinking that we are all safe alcohol sanitizers to be there everywhere in your hospital at easily available places no touch receptacles for the dust bins with the foot pedal you can do that not have to lift it and also have tissues the other small thing which you can do is if you are in a clinic should not have any magazines in your table which we normally keep they will be a source a very rare source maybe but it can be when a person sneezes or coughs and then they can be a source which another person within 10 minutes lifts it up and does it don't have plastic glasses which are dispo which are there or i would say we glasses which are there which are making like your glass uh, 
have only plastic ones or uh, paper disposables don't have the shisha glasses of having giving chai or coffee because they will also be a source of spreading infection in your things small things but will be important for people in the clinics because remember we have to be ensuring that the people do not get infection from our hospitals if they do get we are in also trouble because our reputation is also at stake after this lockdown finishes as far as for the personal protection ffp2 or ffp3 can be used in india we do not have ffp3 right now which is n99 so ffp2 which is more than 94 is usually used which is n94 at present which should be used especially for all hospital going people gloves is a must at least so this is the two minimum things which we as healthcare providers need to do for every person in the hospital at our hospital this has been done n95 along with gloves are being used by every healthcare professional if possible and we are having a disposable cdc mechanism of using five and gloves five masks for the 20 days as has been propounded by the cdc all the patients and their entrants need to have face masks because remember you are trying to protect and reduce the spread of the thing it is airborne by fomite we know that but at least from the source we can control it and not protect the person who's going to get it but also the source protection is going to be there contingency for the in house as was said only in patients which are desperate who cannot be admitted sent out should be admitted this is again for the crisis part for contingency you can decide in what state your hospital or your district is shift your diagnostic and elective surgical procedures to op settings if you are in very small and very contingency state and not in crisis i'll tell you an example just like murli was saying regarding the ot for a radiology if you have a covid patient who was asymptomatic and then you come to know that he has got a ct scan done and you had not taken proper precautions you might require 2 to 3 hours to sanitize your radiology unit altogether so if your ct scans have been used you have to earmark that these are the ct scan which will be used for covid positive and the other ones will be used for regular patients and which will lead to dichotomy of resources and not be helpful in long run you have to limit the movement of patients maybe have portable things which can be there in the wards have curtains between the patients as regards say ppe understand there are six or seven components to it which include a face sheet head mask head cover eye covers different type of mask a cover all which means that from the neck till the lower feet you are covered all together and you also have shoe covers and the gloves as was said high risk are the icu people who medium risk we normally fall in the medium risk where we are going to take care of the trauma cases and with patients who are covid positive in opd or wards or asymptomatic at least we should have n95 mask or a triple layered mask whichever is available depending upon constraints and we are gloves i will plead everyone who is ever doing a healthcare provider to have a mask and a glove on him whenever he goes into the hospital at least without any other thing because right now we do not know whether we are in stage 2 or stage 3 cluster spreading and community transmission may be starting in some areas low risk you also have to take care of healthcare professionals and providers do not mean only the doctors they mean even the sweeper who is working in your hospital rather he is most infected or rather can as got the susceptibility to get infection so those may also require protection which mandatory you have to give low risk are the receptionists the security personnel and the visitors and in constrained environment you will have to ensure that it is prioritized whenever you go to the opd have a questionnaire or a consent with them whether they have a covid questionnaire whether they have fever difficulty in breathing or they have traveled outside or have been exposed also have informed written consent saying that you are and the patient knows about the risk which he is going in and absolves the hospital or the nursing homes for any covid infection which he gets and get it signed remember the things and the laws may still be there which may force you to ensure that the patient starts saying that like in some countries and some regions of rajasthan it happened that patients tried to sue the doctor and the hospital saying that we got covid from this hospital 
get it if you are doing an opd or a follow up get this consent made of your hospital and get it signed from them once he comes in along with the vernacular consent what we need to do is we need to be shifting and adjusting the way we are working right now no face to face care as least as possible and virtual visits are the things which will reduce exposure for all that brings us to the telehealth and telemedicine as for the who what the, it's a huge definition but what is important is it's a healthcare delivery mechanism where distance is the critical factor you provide entire spectrum of health for individual or for society so these are the four critical key points in telemedicine telemedicine is not same as telehealth telemedicine just deals with clinical aspects whereas telehealth deals with even research education and all the entire spectrum of health services which can be provided in an indian scenario we just had this telemedicine practice guidelines which have been established by the board of governors on 25th of march which came up also for homeopathy people right now the benefits we know for the patients and for the doctors both of them are there it can give good access affordability and comfort for the patient whereas for the doctors we can do our routine follow ups and monitoring very fast reducing the burden of the hospitals and reducing the risks in an indian scenario at present the guidelines say that you can use any of the tools video audio text anything whatsapp skype telegram facetime messengers everything is valid it has not commented and excluded specifically foreign patients so you it's not valid for the foreign patients it is does not provide you with a specific data management system which you should acquire the hardware and the softwares it is not also valid for research and health education right now the guidelines given on 25th march have only sanctity for the health providing and the clinical aspect not for education and research etc everybody every practitioner is supposed to undergo an online course within the next 3 years once it has been enacted these are just guidelines they need to be enacted and then within 3 years we need to do an online course to be doing a telemedicine thing from our hospital the element says it should be contextual we have to know that it is sufficient for the patient benefit identification is the key how do i know that the person whom i am looking at on the other side is the real patient and he is not taking anybody else's name and getting the treatment so identification is critical in first you need to have an identification both of the doctor as well as the, the patient because you might have to give your registration numbers and the person in the patient might have to give an id like an aadhar or something by which you can make sure that you are giving the right thing to the right patient communication as i said can be anything video audio or text implied and explicit consents if the person and mind i'll just take one two minutes extra out here for the people that if you are having telemedicine which has been given sanctity right now implied consent means when the patient is calling you up he rings you up and asks for a consent it is same as a hospital in the hospital the patient comes to the opd so that is implied and does not require anything further but if you are calling up the patient asking him for anything that how he is then you require an explicit written consent before you start your telemedicine so if you are calling up the patient you need to have a consent if the patient is calling you up then you do not read a consent because that is implied right now the type of consultations can be first or follow up and that will also help us whether to know whether we are dealing with the identity of the patient follow up or the if you have a gap of 6 months then it is considered as a follow up or a repeat consultation for that matter you can do anything evaluation in video if you want to examine you can also take the help of a practitioner who is along with the patient who can do the things for you and tell you so it is from the rmp also that you can help health education counseling and prescription of medicines that is the thing which is key so the guidelines are freely available at the ministry of health and family welfare place telemedicine it's a 51 page document you can know which are the medicines schedule o schedule x which can be given over the thing which can be prescribed like a hypertensive drug or other drug before which you need a video telemedicine and video call 
or there are scheduled x drugs which you cannot prescribe because they need a proper in person consultation and for our benefit tramadol comes in that schedule x so remember that you cannot prescribe tramadol on a video consult or on telemedicine so these are the components of the telemedicine which we should know about all of you can look at it at the ministry of health and welfare side which is there and freely available pdf which has been there also litigation wise and medical ethics and data privacy confidentiality needs to be maintained especially from the healthcare provider side the legality remains the same as in opd consultation in person face to face that has been the thing now it is legal previously there were episodes when people on telemedicine had some issues but now this has been made legal it needs promotion by the healthcare and the insurers because how they are going to pay us or the patients for the insurers is going to be a thing which still needs to be taken care of yes yesterday i got this telehealth by applications and there are various places by which you can get there are various now people who are working up startups starting to give us telehealth by hospitals who will give us everything managed for the hospitals for the individual practitioners right now finally just one minute more i will say that manpower is the most important thing remember this shole picture when we had half people go that side half people go that side and rest come with me it should not happen to us when we are dealing with covid in the crisis situation we need to take care of our manpower we because they are going to go down because of quarantine sickness fear infection and sometimes though rarely i hope due to death we have to think of protecting the hcp or the healthcare provider who might be at higher risks like older age people pregnant doctors and patients with cardiac morbidities or diabetes clarity required regarding what you are working for whether you are working for reducing the trauma load or you are working in a covid area or doing your orthopedic trauma practice as was said have a rota ideal is 1 is to 4 so that you have two more, two weeks of quarantine 1 is to 3 separate team leaders should be there professional indemnity is a thing which right now nobody knows people who have tried to do the renewal of their insurance knows that they have put in a clause regarding infectious diseases which needs to be concerned and taken care of now and we also have to think about the chat groups and the video conferencing just like we are doing right now with our own medical health professionals the team which was working together for the first so many years now is separate we should be looking at because it helps us to increase our morale and reduce the stresses at present finally i would say that we are to strike a fine balance a very fine balance when the covid has come here between our own personal protection and the patient safety with whom we are going to deal with remember we have to have a very balance so that we do not make the person going down or the patients or the provider or the getter who is going to go down only then we are able and will be able to give the best to all our patients and work for our nation thank you mm-hmm.